On a hot day in the middle of July, the Upper Midwest scene gets together in St. Paul to show off what they've been working on. This is the Full Tilt Boogie. Bikes, vans, music, and good times abound. Coming up, we'll hear more about Devin's bedroom-built sportster, Kevin Teach Bass's high school chopper class, and we'll get in the back of the van with Zach Doom. Let's go. So my name is Rob Holtz. They call me Bobby Good Times from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I bought the 1947 survival knucklehead called Blowdozer. Yeah, so the story of Blowdozer is I had the bike for about 20 years. I got it in 06. I bought it from a local guy as a panhead chopper built in 1972, Survivor. The guy's wife wouldn't let him finish the bike because she's like, that bike's too dangerous. So he stopped building it. I bought it from the guy's grandson in Chicago, Illinois. And it was just sitting in his basement, so he drug it out, and I, I got a tip that it was for sale. And I went to see it, and it had six bends on it, a long AE fender, and it's a fiberglass molded tank, and it had a fiberglass fender, and it had a king-queen seat and old sissy bar. And I had my pickup truck, and it was so long, it wouldn't fit in my truck. So I said, hey, when's the last time it ran? He said, it probably ran in 72. That's what he told me. I said. Well, I'll tell you what, I said, if I can get it running here, can I work on it for a couple hours? And maybe I can get it running, I can ride it home. He goes, there's no way. So I put gas in it, I wired it all up. I got some wire, wired it up, and tinkered with some things, and I kicked it, and it fired right up. And the guy's like, no way. So it didn't have a tail light or a headlight on, it just had just enough wires to get it running. And I rode it down Milwaukee Avenue about six miles to my shop with hardly any brakes, no headlight, taillight, through bumper to bumper Chicago traffic, just go pulling over into the uh, to the shoulder so I wouldn't hit any cars and I would get back in. And I limped it all the way to the shop and then I took all that stuff off and I put an har extended Harley Springer on it, a real sissy bar, a new seat and everything. And I rode it around for a couple of years as a panhead. Actually, I went around Lake Michigan on it with a group of guys and Something stupid happened. I had a leaky base gasket or something weird. I took it all apart. I was going to redo it. And then I bought a knucklehead project and I did the knucklehead project. My white bike called the White Wizard and Space Ghost. And it just sat in a corner for 10 years. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to bring it back. And I went to my buddy's, Ryan Hartman's shop because I was like, you know what? This bike needs a rigid fork. And I don't want to buy an old 70s one or whatever. I'd rather have you make one. And he goes, man, you got that knucklehead motor sitting on your on your, on your shelf, right? I was like, yeah. He goes, it needs to be a knuckle because it's a 36 knuckle frame originally. And I said, shit, all right. And then I put the knucklehead motor in. I was like, all right, now it's going to be a knucklehead. So he finished the front end for me. I built the bike. I had my buddy Drew Huddleston come over. We pieced together the exhaust threw a mag in it, and I literally got the bike running two days ago. And I rode it for the first time yesterday. <laughs> so I did about six miles going up and down Kevin Teach Bass's road, straight road, doing about 80, 90 miles an hour back and forth, and now it's here. So really excited for it, man, yeah. I didn't fall into the trappings of changing anything. The tank is still fiberglass, still holds up, original paint. You know, it's been weathered for me riding it over the years, but uh, Chris from St. Louis, they call him shithead. He kind of molded the fender in for me, painted it kind of similar paint. I had Jerry Shinga, pinstriper Jerry, do the pinstriping on it, kind of match the old gold pinstripe. And uh, that's the only thing I changed. The old fiberglass fender was detachable. It wasn't molded in, so. Uh, so I figured I would just run it until the fiberglass tank rot whatever it's gonna do leak or get a hole and then i'll take it off and do something like i mean the original uh, the original white with the with the white uh tablecloth paint and the old pinstripe and survivor black nothing's changed i kept it all the same the rigid front end is like a next level part so they're bsa trees chromoly forks and the tree the legs are detachable through bolts through the top of the uh, handlebars. So you can drop each leg out and take the take the front end apart pretty easy. So, um, I'm proud about that, even though I didn't build it. You know, I, I walked into his shop, I was like, I'm building a rigid, I want a rigid front end for this bike, but I know you'll do something that I can trust. And the funny thing is, 
literally I was going up and down the road doing about 80 on it and I didn't even think about it was a rigid front end at all or brand new. It, it rode so smooth and straight and I wasn't even nervous about it at all. So it just, man, it just ripped, it stayed true. I had one hand, no wobble. It's a little heavy, but you know, it's long. So, it, and I'm happy about the pipes too. Me and my buddy kind of pieced together the pipes to where it matches the, the rake of the front end. So that, that's about it. And it's a 47 knuckle. So and I've had it sitting on the shelf for years. I literally just checked the push rods, put it in the bike and it fired right up. So. Man, I do a bike every like five years. You know, it's not like I just churn them out. And I don't really build bikes for clients, whatever. I just do them for myself. But it just brings all my all the best people together in one place. And I'm kind of helpless at some things, so I'll call my buddy in from here. Kevin Bass is doing my mag here. Get all this shit and everyone converges. And then we get to meet up at this. But I really, there's something about pulling up somewhere on your own bike that you, I mean, look, Harley Davidson built the bike, really, you know. I just customized it to what I like, and so, but just pulling up somewhere on your own bike and just be like, wow, that's really cool. That feels pretty good. I like that part. Yeah. So my business called BGT, Bobby Good Times, and uh, like I said, I, I was going to think about getting into the bike customizing business, but... I have a real job that pays real good, so I'm not retired from that yet. So I was like, what can I do to stay kind of fresh, to stay kind of in the game? And, you know, I don't make a ton of money at it, but I can just come to shows like this or swap meets and vent. And so I'm an electrician by trade, and I'm a, I work in the refineries in Chicago, so I'm a conduit bender by trade. So I started bending up handlebars using my skills as a bender. And then people were like, oh, can I have a set? Can I have a set, whatever. And it kind of just took off from there. The best part about it is, is that, you know, I'll close the books when I get too busy. Like I don't rely on it, but you know, if I get too busy, I'll, I'll push them off on other benders that I like. And like, I'm too busy, but you can go here and there. But it just, I love it. I See, like I have, I, I bet a set of bar, I made a set of bars for a guy whose bike is here. And we're like holding it up to it. And we're like, holy shit. And just seeing the people's faces. I actually, I bet the bars on that bike right there for that Born Free bike right there. Those are my bars. So just seeing that, seeing a bike at a show with my bars or when people post their pictures, like tanks, seats, handlebars, like those are the things that people really stress about on their bike. And when they say, you know, I only, I bend them one at a time too. I do them custom. So I don't churn out 20 and sell them. So a guy's specific with his bar, and I give it to him specifically for his bike, and they get so excited when it shows up, man, that's all I need, man. That's what I love about it, yeah, so. And my name's uh, Rob Holtz from Chicago, Illinois. They call me Bobby Good Times. 1947 Survivor Knuckle Blowdoze. Catch me at Bobby GT on Instagram, Bobby GT.
name's Kevin Bass uh, from Prior Lake, Minnesota. Um, I'm a high school shop teacher at uh, Lakeville. I got a uh, 1968 Dodge A108 Sportsman camper van today and a uh, 1939 uh, knucklehead up front there. Uh, knuckle's my 39, it's a stroke DL, so short rib case pre-war knuckle, which is you know kind of a no-no to, for people to, to, to have them built like that because it's a time bomb. But man, I love it, I, I race it, I'm all over the country on it. I've had it uh, down at Harley-Davidson for the 115th, I was racing on the beach. I do ice racing with it in the winters. And man, it's just, a, it's just a good old bike, a lot of parts on it that I collected from good friends across the country, so it's got a lot of soul to it, you know, and it's not a true correct 39, you know, the tanks are 48 and different things, but you know, the way it all came out, it's like, I don't want to change it, I just love it the way it is. Yeah, that motor, actually, when I first got that motor, I didn't have the correct frame yet, so that is a 39 frame it's in. I was in Born Free, I was a builder for Born Free 5 and 6, and uh, but just put the feelers out there, you know, you go out there and everybody knows everybody and they can find you parts you need, and, was looking for a 39 frame. Some buddy said, yeah, there's a, a guy over here has got one. So I was able to score that from him. And then uh, once I got the 39 frame and put the motor in, then I kind of, it was more of a, a chopper, you know, at the time. And now it's kind of evolved to that bobberish look that it is now and more of a cut down kind of racy bobber. So no, no, I got a couple of them. Uh, I got a 47, a 46. My wife's got a 46. I got a SNS custom knuckle. Um, I got, uh, well, I got flat heads. I got a 1942 UL flat head. I got a 58 pan head, a 57 pan head, a 55K model, a little dirt track racer, a 77 iron head, 78 iron head, a 85 iron head, and a 58 XLCH. So quite a few things in my, my stash. Yeah, usually when I ride, if I'm gonna go anywhere like on a, a distance ride, I take my 47, which is called Elvis. I named him, he's got some chrome, old beat up chrome tanks on him. And, and that, that's the first knuckle I've ever owned, first one I built, and that's the one I rode all the way from Lakeville, Minnesota to California for Born Free 3. And when I got out there, I met you know, Grant and those guys that are putting on the show. And uh, we were talking about, hey, you should, you know, they, they heard about what I was doing with the kids. And you know, I was like, wow, the show's too early in the year. You know, I'm still in school. So they actually bumped the show until uh, school would be out for me so then I could become an invite builder for those two years. So uh, Elvis is the one I rode all the way out there, man. It was cool, like experience like none other, you know, going through the mountains, they were Route 66, you know, a million dollar highway, all on that old tank ship knuckle. And it's like, I'm glad I did it when I did because you know, I'm 50 years old now and I'm starting to slow down. So rides like that are getting a little tougher for me to pull off, but I'm still gonna do some big trips on it and, you know, until eventually I give it to my boys. Uh, I guess one of the coolest things about that is, you know, it was a, a good friend of my dad's down in Milwaukee who owned the motor, and uh, he was talking to some people about selling the motor, and what was neat is, like, he kind of chose me as the next care caretaker for it. You know, he, he, he knew he could have got more money by throwing it on, you know, eBay or whatever, and it could have went somewhere out of the state or out of the country. And he wanted it to go to somebody he knew that would love it and take care of it and keep it in their collection. And so he, he kind of, he chose me as the one, like, if you're interested in this motor, I want you to be the, the next caretaker. So it's in here now. And like I say, it's going to go to uh, one of my boys someday, hopefully, and they'll, they'll love it as much as I do. So the chopper class kind of evolved uh, through the years. I've been teaching almost 30 years now. When I first started teaching, um, I was kind of doing a little bit of everything. You know, I didn't really have my, my spot at that school. Once I started working on my curriculum, I was just going through my head, like, how can I make this class fun, you know? I mean, you want kids to be safe, you want them to learn good skills, but you want them to have fun, you know? If they're not having fun, they're not gonna take the class anymore. And I had an old, my 58 XLCH iron head, my first Harley, it was, uh, I blew it up on our trip one summer, so it had been sitting forever, and I thought, I'm gonna bring that in and we'll work on it and see if any kids wanna, you know, stay after school, do like a little club, chopper club. And lo and behold, man, I had like three, four kids first couple of days. All of a sudden it was seven kids. Next thing I know, it was 15 kids. And I was like, I'm on to something here. You know, a lot of these kids were skipping out of normal school, but they would come after school to hang out with me and then learn about welding and fabrication and wanted to work on that bike. And it was right before like all the TV shows and the chopper craze went crazy. So I hit it at kind of a good time. And once I had enough excitement after school, I had the principal come down and look at all the kids that were in there. And he's just like, man, yeah, you, if, you, if you want to make this class, you know, go ahead and put together some curriculum. We'll, we'll present it to the board and see what they say. And they, they approved it. And all, that's all she wrote. You know, history was set. Uh, the van I picked up from a good buddy in uh, North Dakota, Minot. Um, I I'd saw when he picked it up and it had a you know, worn out inline six in it. And, he uh, swapped the 360 into it out of a, an old Dodge RV that had low miles. And so I was always on him like, dude, if you ever sell that van, I want that thing. It's so cool. And a couple years went by and finally, lo and behold, he just got a hold of me and said, man, I'm coming to town for your, your pre Donnie Smith show party. I can bring that van. I will trailer it down for you and drop it off. I'm like, sold, do it. So 
I've had it ever since. My wife loves it. She drives it all the time. It's kind of more her van than anything. She takes it whenever she can, but it's cool because, you know, we can put the top up. Uh, we can put a couple bikes in there, bring our display stuff to vend, and, you know, just have a good time. Like, coming up here this morning, like, everybody that comes up, they're getting next to you, giving you a thumbs up, and it's, it's pretty cool, man. It's fun. No, vans are actually something new to me. Like, I, I love the style and stuff. I just really haven't done much work on them yet. So this one you know, is obviously going to need some love. So I'm planning on doing not a, not a full restoration because I like the original paint aspects, but I want to fix up the little dents and dings and kind of the rust spots and then redo the interior and have like the full kitchenette in there and make it so that we can actually take it you know, across country and sleep in it, you know? My name's Kevin Teach Bass, Prior Lake, Minnesota. Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's Kevin Teach Bass or uh, Facebook, same thing.
name is Devin C. Millett. I'm from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. My okay. bike is a 1997 XLH 1200 custom hardtail chopper. It started off as a just pure stock purple and chrome 1997 XLH. During the Minnesota winter, I brought my bike inside of our bedroom. You know, God bless my wife for putting up with me for this. And I tore every single piece off that bike down to the bare frame, sandblasted it and chopped it in half, put on a throttle addiction hardtail with it at my buddy Jay Spain's shop. Uh, we welded it up, mocked up our fenders, our gas tanks. At this point it was like January, so I was trying to come up with an idea and just drawing out different paint schemes, what I like. I got connected with Peter Lex out of Grand Meadow, Minnesota, who I gave my drawings to, and he was like, I'll make it happen, man. And he painted up my tank, made it perfect. He gave me hot rod flames on one side, the classic chopper guy sunrise on the other, and then just some cool waves on the top. Put in six over tubes in the front, chrome spoke wheels in the rear and the front. Um, I, did, I chopped up my cam cover and my sprocket cover to make it kind of look like an old generator uh, big twin, which yeah, it might be posers, but I, I like, and slapped a chain on it. Um, I threw on, I wired it up as minimal as possible too with just old cloth covered um, wiring. And I set it up to just run off of key switch on and then a start button lever connected directly to the starter a 2.1 narrow Frisco tank on it. I've ran out of gas about five times. <laughs> Throttle addiction, nine inch vintage narrow apes, which I freaking love. Originally, I actually had rabbit ears on there. I rode it for one year and I'm like, ah, uh, you know, not for me, not for me. They look cool, but they are sketch city, man. Just a little added detail that I like is the vintage cloth spark plugs with the throttle addiction ivory boots on them that are finned. It's just that little contrast in there really makes it pop. Other than that, I put a Barnett clutch in it. I did N4 Andrew cams in the engine. Yeah, that's kind of it. Anti-gravity batteries too, they kick ass. Yeah. I went in blind. Absolutely blind. I went in before Throttle Addiction released their videos on how to use their hardtail, how to build it and stuff. So I just kind of got it and I just, you know, read the paper instructions and went with it. No welding experience at all. And that's what my, uh, my friend Jeremiah Spain, he was like, hey, bring it to my shop, man. You know, we'll go through all through it. I'll teach you how to weld. We'll cut it. And uh, we did and it was really easy really smooth the one problem i had with this was my 97 when i cut the cam cover um, i trimmed it down all the extra metal that you don't need on it there is a little hole i don't know why this hole's here but it's there and it goes straight through the bottom and i didn't notice it when i cut all the extra metal off and when i put it back on i started the bike and oil just started hissing through it and so i just Plugged it up with uh, some red Loctite and a self-tapping screw and haven't had, haven't had a leak since. So it's been killer, pretty smooth. My favorite ride that I've taken it is, so in Minnesota, you're from Eau Claire, so you might know the flood run route. Um, so that's basically from Minneapolis, you take, you go over to 10 and then you go into Prescott, Wisconsin. And from there you take 35 down to the St. Croix and it is just such a beautiful ride. I took it out like mid-October with my friend John and it was beautiful colors all around. I was on my chopper, he was on his, and we were just all day riding the road all the way down to Wabasha and then, you know, kind of back up and everything. Uh, stopped in Maiden Rock because you got to stop in Maiden Rock. And that's, that's probably my favorite ride until probably this August where I'm going to take that chopper up to the UP of Michigan and ride Lake Superior. Honestly, when I got into bikes, I just like, my first bike, I just couldn't leave it alone. I'm a guy that I like to put my personal touch into things. My mentor, who became my mentor, his name is Daniel Hedberg. He was, is really into the old school chopper scene. He gave me some magazines and some ideas. And when I saw this stuff and when I really like looked at him, I'm like, that's what I want to do. I want to do choppers. This is like 
what I feel like my uh, being in motorcycles is. I just love the idea of making something bone stock into your own personal machine. When someone sees it, they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's Devin's bike, or you know, oh yeah, that's, that's Zach's bike, or oh, that's Daniel's bike. Being able to distinguish that stuff is what makes it your own. That's what I love about it. From Throttle Edition, I got the spark plug wires and boots, ivory with the fins on them. I've got the Throttle Edition hardtail. I've got the Throttle Edition horseshoe oil tank and battery holder on it. And then the Throttle Edition uh, trailer flat fender. I believe it's five inches across. Um, Throttle Edition sissy bar on it. I've got the king and queen uh, diamond stitch from Throttle Edition and the nine inch uh, chrome vintage narrow ape hangers from Throttle Edition. My name is Devin Millett. I'm from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. You can follow me on, what can they follow me on? They can follow me at Devin C. Millett on Instagram. I am not very active on it. <laughs>Zach Mitchell, Zach Doom, I'm out of St. Paul, Minnesota, and I uh, started Full Tilt Boogie about 12 years ago. I think this is our 13th year. We started our show at the tail end of, a, of, a, of what I would say would be the Discovery Biker Build-Off era, where, uh, you know, it's mostly fat tire shops, 
We were obviously into the skinny 60s chops. Um, we started bringing them to other shows. We started winning some shit here and there and get some recognition. So we were like, why don't we start a show where we invite all of our friends from other cities in the Midwest to you know, come to the show with their choppers and uh, that's how it was born. Okay, yeah, putting on a show like this in the Twin Cities area, um, you know, it's all about location, man, you know what I'm saying? And we've been through a lot of locations. We've had highs, we've had lows, you know, and uh, we kind of finally got it together in the last couple of years and uh, started filling in the blanks and, you know, having lots of food options, you know. Hey, who figures who wants food? You know, we we're, you know, our, we're living rough for a while and, you know, now people, you know, like a little bit of comfort, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like whether you do your personally or not but uh, I love doing a show in the cities I love people coming to the cities I like showing them other sites of the cities and uh, what our city has to offer and uh, you know this St. Paul has always embraced this show and these people and you know it's, it's been a good thing yeah the scene is very strong in this area we have a lot of history in this area we uh, you know we so, I mean we had we've got builders in this town, this area, that have done born free builds like number one and two and three. We got, most of us have had bikes and mama tried, um, Fuel Cleveland. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is strong. It's, uh, it goes through its cycles, but you know, the people that stick around, you know, they, they really make up for, you know, people that don't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It turned into choppers and vans, yes. It's a lot of uh, crossover in that area more than ever than before, you know, generations, the vanders and bikers, and uh, it's just worked out real nice, and it's been a great relationship with, you know, both parties, you know. Everybody gets along, so it's cool. All right, uh, two years ago, Minnesota, the van club, we got a couple members that are handing out best van trophy today. They put on this thing called the Van Nationals, which was about a thousand of these vans. Once a year, they get together for five days at a different spot in the country. Once a year, every year, it could be Pennsylvania, it could be California. This year it was Colorado. Uh, two years ago it was Minnesota here. So we got to see that, that came to us here. And uh, that really like was a big eye opener for, you know, a very underground scene, you know. Just a few magazines, you know. It's, but it, it's, it's there, you know, <laughs> we tried to find it, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, van, this is a 1978 Chevy G20. I got it from one owner. It's pretty much all original. I did things like, uh, you know, put on different wheels, steering wheel, all the wood trim. Like I've been able to find all these vintage parts for this van and add to it. You know, as you know, so I'm adding to what was originally done, and you know, this is a '78 Survivor. Yeah, I mean, it was built in uh, was it not Gary, Indiana? Was it that other Elkhart, Indiana, which was where the van craze started and the RV craze started, came out of that. You know, that part of the Midwest. Yes, I mean, the van culture in the Midwest is very strong, especially out of like Pennsylvania, Ohio, towards the east. And, uh, you'd be surprised. Oh, this van, man, you know what? I don't know, I mean, I like the whole thing, man. I just like the energy it has, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, it's something that I'll, I'll never be able to find something like this in this nice of shape again, so I can't get rid of it, so it's just part of the family, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm behind heavy clothing as well, yes. I started that about the same time as I started the bike show, and that was another thing, too, where... I I couldn't get a t-shirt I wanted, right? And we would laugh at, you know, these affliction shirts and these other cheesy shirts and we'd just be like, you know, we're not don't want to wear that. So I literally like you know, I had I had friends, uh, lots of friends that've been in bands and they, you know, have merch and I learned how they would travel the country and sell t-shirts to get to the next city to play the next show and that's how i originally modeled the whole thing after it was you know the kind of rock and roll merch thing and you know but we put like we we're the we're the first literally besides like some dave man stuff put a cult choppers psychedelic you know uh, aliens you know just strangeness all together you know what i mean together you know, with choppers <laughs> you know?
Uh, Zach Doom, St. Paul, Minnesota. You can, if you're on Instagram, at Heavy Clothing. I got a link in my bio, at Full Tilt Boogie. <clears throat> Facebook as well. You should be able to find it. Uh, Instagram's where we usually are for social media, though. So, yep.
with Throttle Addiction from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and we brought the War Horse, an 80-inch Evolution uh, hardtail chopper to the show. So we bought the War Horse a few towns away from us. Uh, it was pretty much uh, in, in rough shape. Uh, the only things we kept on it are the motor, transmission, and the frame. Everything else was completely stripped off. Had a real 90s flat black, red pinstripe everywhere. We got rid of all that. Uh, churched it up with a few things. Springer front end, uh, some matching front and rear black spoke wheels, two inch open primary. Uh, it had a big old three inch aluminum billet, son of a gun on it. We got rid of all that, cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, a little, little narrow, narrower, a little tighter. Uh, nice chrome wassail fender. Got a little mid tunnel wassail tank. Uh, local guy we know, Justin, painted it up. Just went with the solid black. Can't go wrong with black. Uh, cleaned up the controls. Basically everything on it, tip to tail. All parts and pieces we got from Throttle Addiction. So we bought this bike quite a few years ago just because the price was right, it was close. Uh, been working on it for a while, plugging away in the evenings uh, just as a fun little project, but we ended up deciding to give it away. So we got it all ready, got it all cleaned up and said uh, it's time, so we're giving it away. So get all your parts and pieces, throttleaddiction.com. Make sure you like and subscribe. Check out our YouTube channel. We actually do a bunch of videos, uh, how-to videos, a bunch of things on this exact bike. Uh, so jump on there, check that out. Again, Seth with Throttle Addiction from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Uh, check us out.